this Wednesday. Hi. All right. Halloween Eve, October 30th, as we get more into our Shadow Club. Uh, let's see, page 74 is going to be due in two days. We've now got through the first part of I Learned, all 20-ish questions of it. For today's schedule, you'll go from this class, then to second, third, and then five, six, seven. So they pretty much go in order, except for fourth period. Adriano? I just realized there's another uh, word that is not spelled right. Why is it two. Good job. Easier. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. The people who did not have this one, we have to then increase the torturing of those kids. For you guys, as far as the snacks in class, I'm not going to keep reminding you forever, but I figured I'd leave it up for today. Uh, that is for tomorrow. I didn't get to, wait, I need to take a picture. I'll take you a picture. Can we go inside of your house? Yeah, what if I sneak inside your house? The whole thing is in his house. Hold it up, hold it up. Same thing. Oh, no. What if he's thinking so you're out? You just want to get up. You got to do it. Then, to help you guys out, I have officially put the homework onto Canvas that you are welcome to go to. This is what is going to be due Tuesday. Once you have gotten your 10 things that you have highlighted, then you don't have to highlight anymore. You are done once you've highlighted the 10 things that you want to write down. On there, when you go to the directions, these are called the directions. So just For you. those of you who are not wanting me to have to like give you a zero and make you redo it, you're probably going to want to make sure you read the directions at some point. But on there it tells you, for each one of them, you're just going to have to tell me, number them, one through ten, then you're going to tell me the page number, what it is that you highlighted, and then how it connects to you in some way. So. This is where you want to make sure you give me enough information where it's not just, uh, I like tree houses, and so I can try to give you a decent grade. Those of you taking pictures of this, it is right there in the directions, just so you know. Hi, Adriano. Can't hear you because we pile the stuff on your desk. Then as we get to the stuff there, we'll go through more examples trying to help you. Adriano, I call on you, but you have no book out. So then we get a chance to help you from that one. This officially comes due Monday night, and as long as it's turned in by Tuesday, then you should be good. Japanese, it looks like you're sitting down. Yeah, you don't get to sit down. Sitting was for kids who had their homework turned in. Silly kid. Right. Questions as far as the homework goes. And Adriano. If I lied and you didn't know about it. I'm sorry, I meant to say, Noah. How many questions is it? What? That is a good question. I bet when you look at the assignment, it tells you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll even give you a hint. Two points for each thing you write. So 20 points. 20. 20. Emma? Uh, 27. I have a better example than yesterday. Who do you? What's your better example? Um, It's for the um, possessed by the devil one. Uh huh. Because my dog, because he attacks me all the time, and he's really annoying. What page is it? That is a better one. Nicely done. Go use it. I don't know. So you just made that up. Then, to go along with helping you, I have also put a thing called the Shadow Club page on there to go along with the homework. The Shadow Club page, though, is just to help you. It is me reading each chapter out loud to you. So for those of you who want an audiobook, I created my own audiobook of it, where I went through and read each chapter. And so to find out, I just went through, I gave them chapter numbers, even though the book doesn't have chapter numbers, but you can match it up by whatever the chapters are called. My God. That's nice of you. How long each video? Depends on how long the chapter is. Okay. So I don't know. Some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. I think they usually average out around a half hour. Well, I think uh, what? Hour. Sometimes. I'm watching all of them with the break. Yeah, like so long. long. How many chapters are there? Too. Adriana, remember earlier when I called on you? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not stupid this time. That's good. Yeah. Then tomorrow we'll find out. No. That's the drawback. You should have asked the not stupid question first. I uh, know. Well, no, but I just I just thought of something that isn't stupid just now. Right. So What's then back to you guys. We'll try to get a bit more of our reading in to try to help you out. There. Let's see. We got past Coach Schuler talking. Treehouse. It was like about 36. Jared and Cheryl. I think it was like 36. So then we're, we just got past page 34. Oh, we got through this with you guys, didn't we? Yeah. 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 So then, in theory, we should be able to do it fairly quickly. What is it Jared's good at doing? Running. 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 Running
Who is Cheryl? Um, the best friend. Oh, wait. What is she good at doing? Singing. 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 Who is Randall? The brother. The brother. I love brother. Dear God. Um, uh, Re who's Rebecca? Who is singing? And she's good at singing. And good at singing. And who do they compare her to? Cheryl. 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 I mean, Shirley, Shirley, Shirley Temple. Says Shirley Temple. Who's Austin Pace? Uh, Austin, Austin, Austin Pace. 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 Annoying to him. Yeah. Annoying to who? Uh, Jared. As the kid told me yesterday, apparently Austin is Jared's op. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh you know that. And Austin. what is? Yeah, I have to talk about these Trust me. Hang on. What is Austin good at doing? Picking his nose. That's all of them. Being weird. Being weird. He's good at being weird. Sorry. Right. Yeah, this is where you have to actually listen to the words. Oh, Austin. Yes. And who's Tyson? We're Chris Rossi. The creepy and weird guy. The creepy and weird guy. And Coach Stewart. It's the coach of the running team. The track team. And then we got to, let's see, oh, right. Right. Yeah, 36. Now, we did, we are on page, what is that, 36? Yeah. 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 35, we're not to 36 yet. But, I had just gotten through, that's what I thought. I wanted to make sure, you guys, we had talked about the Tasmanian Devil. So we are at the bottom of page 35. Oh, this was right after uh, Tyson got into a fight and looked like the Tasmanian devil spinning and hitting and stuff like that. After Mr. Green had broken up the fight, which wasn't much of a fight, it was more like Tyson doing an impersonation of the Tasmanian devil, everyone in the hall began to applaud and laugh at Tyson as he continued struggling with Green. I have to admit, I laughed a little too. Like I said, it was a school tradition. Mr. Green held him as he struggled. Then Tyson turned to Green and screamed out a whole lot of words I don't want to repeat and started breathing like a bull ready to charge. What page are you know what he did? He screamed at Green. What did he do, Tyson? He called me a slime ball. I laughed right away. I couldn't help it. It was the way he said it, with all that anger in his voice, long and drawn out. Slime ball. Everyone laughed, but I guess I must have laughed the loudest because Tyson broke away from Green and stomped up to me. You think that's funny, huh? He yelled, almost ready to pull back his fist and hit me. Hey, you touch me, Tyson, and I swear I'll flatten you. I'll, I'll, I'll hang you by your toenails over a bear trap. That one really sent him for a loop. He looked at me with those weird eyes, trying to figure out how that would feel. For a split second, I felt bad for him. Here he was, this nutty kid, in a frenzy, and everyone was laughing at him. He must have felt terrible. I almost felt like saying, it's okay, Tyson, you're not a slime ball, just take it easy. Just to make him feel better, but then everyone around me began to laugh even harder, and Tyson just stormed off. Green gave me this dirty look that said, bear trap? I'll give you a bear trap, bang, zoom, and ran after Tyson. <laughs> yep, school was the same as ever. As the homeroom bell rang, I heard a voice behind me. Jared, I'd like to speak with you for a minute. I recognized the voice right away. I turned to see Coach Schuler. You know that feeling you get when you think something great is going to happen and your heart misses a beat and you get shivers down your spine? Like, you guys can highlight that and put every day coming to English, I understand. Well, that's what I felt just then. Why would Coach Schuler pull me aside to talk to me unless he had good news for me about the captaincy? Hi, Coach. What's up? You got a minute? Yeah. Great. Why don't you come into my office? I followed him down the hall and into the gym where it was much quieter. Our footsteps echoed in the huge, into the huge empty gym as we crossed it. It was cold and the air had the sour smell of the floor varnish. 
We went into the gym office. Have a seat, he said. And then he picked up his clipboard and began to look at it. He sat in the other chair behind the desk. I, uh, I totaled up the results. Yeah, I said, trying to sound like I didn't really care. It was pretty close. Yeah? He looked up from his clipboard. I really couldn't read his expression. He had a poker face. I guess you could never tell what was in his head. He stalled, keeping me in suspense. I didn't have a poker face. I knew all the expectation was in my eyes, in my lap, and my fingers crossed so hard my knuckles were turning white. But you didn't get it, Jared. I'm sorry. At first it was like I didn't quite hear him. My fingers were still crossed, as if crossing them could change what he had said. I still held my breath, but then what my ears had heard made its way into my brain. You know that sinking feeling? The kind you get about ten seconds before you realize you're going to throw up? Well, I didn't feel like I was going to throw up, but that sinking feeling stayed around for a long time. I'm assuming you're going to highlight that part and just put math class, and that makes sense also. Before I went into his office, I'd been prepared to lose, but then he called me in, and I was sure that I had won. Why couldn't he have just let me find out when he posted it? I could have handled that. It wouldn't have been so bad. I would have just looked and walked away. But now he'd gotten my hopes up, and I couldn't just walk away. I had to sit there and feel lousy. Like I said, it was a close race. You and Austin were neck and neck all the way. He began to fiddle with his clipboard. If it wasn't his clipboard, it was his whistle. If it wasn't his whistle, it was his glasses. He always fiddled with something. Listen, I know how much you wanted to be counted. And because of all your hard work, I'm not going to make you a very special offer. As a runner-up, you are entitled to something very special. So, I'm making you assistant coach. Assistant coach, I said. Now, that might not sound so bad to you, but... You have to understand that assistant coach was a position usually given to some younger kid who was not good enough runner to be on the team. He might as well have told me I was like a team mascot. Assistant coach? That's right. Well, what do I get to do? Take attendance? Get equipment? Stuff like that. What was I supposed to say to that? Austin gets all the glory and power of being team captain. And I get to take attendance. I tried to be enthusiastic, but I just couldn't. And the coach could see it in my eyes. I didn't have a poker face. Thanks. You don't seem too happy about it. No, I'm happy. I'm just a little upset about not being captain, that's all. Sure. All right, I understand. You can hang around here for a few minutes if you like. I'll give you a late pass for homeroom. No, that's okay. I'm sure he could tell by my voice that it wasn't okay. And I didn't have a poker voice either. Listen, there's always high school. Right, I said, silently thinking how lost in space would win again when we were seniors in high school. Thanks. That's the least I can do. You're, you're a good kid, Jaron. I feel bad for you. No, don't feel bad for me. I don't, I don't want you feeling bad for me. Well, I mean... I think that sometimes life gives people the short end of the stick, you know, and, and I think you deserve more. Thanks, I said, for the 1200th time. I'll see you this afternoon. Yeah, be early so you can take attendance. The hall was... <laughs> yeah. The hall was empty when I left the gym, except for one kid. I think I have a picture of this one. What? Oh, no, we're not there yet. Ew, it looks like... I'll leave it. There's We're going to get to that in just a moment. Aww. The hall was empty when I left the gym, except for one kid, none other than lost in space himself, was standing outside the gym doors. He was waiting for me. It wasn't a coincidence. Oh, you spoke to the coach already, huh? Yep. So he told you I won? How'd you already know? Ah, he spoke to me first. You don't think he'd tell you before he told me, do you? Austin waited for an answer, but I didn't give him one. I'll bet you like being the team secretary. Assistant coach. Ah, all it really is is team secretary. 
Hey, I'll make sure to give you lots of memos to type. Maybe you can come over to my house sometime and answer some phones. <laughs> I turned and walked down the hall. He followed, his arrow pez gliding across the floor. I wanted to step on him and leave nice gray tread marks on the snow white leather toes. It's not secretary. All right, gopher then. I stopped. What? You know, gopher. Hey, Jared, go for this. Hey, Jared, go for that. Hey, Jared, go for gopher, gopher. I just scowled at him. He saw the anger in my unpoker face and laughed. Just kidding, he said in the nastiest, most obnoxious tone a person could come up with. Then he laughed harder and turned away, his aeropeds bouncing off down the hallway, squeaking on the floor. I felt, by the way, when he's calling a gopher, if you're unaware, that's why I put this picture up. That's what a, a gopher is, like the little ground hall thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that is from Winnie the Pooh when I was typing in the environment. And so a gopher is just a nickname because he's like G O space F O R, like you have to go for things. But he's calling him a gopher just like to taunt him. I felt more humiliated then I'd felt in a long time as I walked down the hall. It wasn't the fact that I was assistant coach that bothered me. It was the fact that Austin knew first and, as usual, made fun of me, calling me gopher. It was bad enough to feel hidden in his shadow, but to be humiliated? That was something else. He was twisting the knife. How would I feel if Austin Pace had never been born? <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Actually, let us talk about it. So, your opinions. Is Austin bullying him? Yeah! So, hang on. Those of you who say yes, what officially has he done to, from what you guys have told me qualifies as bullying, nothing that has occurred officially qualifies from what you guys say is bullying. So, how does this qualify as bullying if you guys all say yes? It's not bullying. I hear. But doing what? It's not like he's... Like teasing, taunting. What's it called? Vocal. I mean, the problem is, can you? Is this the kind of situation you can involve a teacher in? Yes. But what is? The, but my question is, if you involve a teacher, he's not like. He's only he's only talking to him. It's not like okay, it's. So if I said if I called you in right now, what would you do? Oh. Go tell the teacher. But that's not what happens here. All he's doing is saying I'm faster than you, and so that's what he is is faster than you. Why would you just uh -huh. that here? What's that? that does he calls him the N word. No, you mean as far as what happens in the no, book? What he said. Hey. Agree. I, I agree. That does happen. You yeah. said it does. No, no, that doesn't happen here oh. in the book. Oh, never mind. That's correct. Like you said that. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. He just came up with a random statement. I'm like, but that has no connection to here. So that's what I was trying to figure out if you guys consider it bullying or not. Yeah. Hey, don't worry. Um, Austin is going to up the stakes in just a moment. Oh, I also have that little cartoon I forgot. Where it says, suddenly Mort realized that he would never climb the corporate ladder. After all, he was just a gopher. When I was typing in the little gopher pictures, he's literally gopher. Oh, so gopher. apparently, he's the same idea. Why does he look more? Anime. Oh, oh my she God, was an anime. Right? Yes, that's why it says orphan. Little uh, orphan uh, anime. Anime. The fire alarm went off at 1:30. That's right. You guessed it. Another school fire. That brown dog I can't yeah. say I wasn't glad to hear the alarm bells. I hadn't been able to concentrate all day because what had happened that morning. At least now, I can feel angry without having to pay attention to teachers at the same time. It used to be nobody raised much of a fuss when the fire alarm went off. The teachers would just get the class up and... Sorry, hiccup. We just get the class up and funnel them out. Sorry, give me the hiccups. And funnel them in an orderly manner down the stairway and out onto the field. Now, it was much quicker and much more serious. It used to be they were all drills or false alarms, but last year, there were three real fires. The last one burned down the gym. 
Now, as we marched into the hall, I could swear I already smelled smoke. The scene out in the field was much more chaotic than any of the teachers could stand for. Kids were running in the field, and the neat little rows of classes were breaking down into mobs of kids, a good many of them pressing up against the fence to see the smoke pouring out of the cafeteria. It wasn't a whole lot of smoke, but it was enough to cause a commotion. I didn't really care to watch the fire. I had my own problems to think about. If I sound heartless, it isn't because I didn't care about anyone left in the school. I'd overheard the principal say that the school had already been cleared and there was nothing to worry about except for the cafeteria burning down. <laughs> Which, believe me, is exactly what the cafeteria deserved. While the cafeteria smoked, I fumed, still filled with the anger Austin had put into me that morning. I don't want to talk about it, I told Cheryl when she asked me about the track team. She knew exactly what I meant when I said, and don't ask again. Well, join the club. Why? What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. It's just that the play they're doing this year is Annie. So? So guess what snotty little brat is absolutely perfect for the role? Rebecca. Rebecca's trying out? Is Rebecca, is Rebecca black? No, but Aww. neither is this little girl. I know. <laughs> yeah. So I spy. This was the newer yeah. one that came oh, out, which I, like I thought that was better. better. But it's this was the original one, which is just a short little kid that was all boppy and had red hair. And apparently Rebecca, who looks like Shirley Temple, was a small little kid that's boppy with red hair. So like already they're saying the fact that most likely her younger cousin is already going to get the lead. In Why is that one different color? <laughs> what? Oh, those Wait, are what? called braces. Some people have a different race than someone else. I heard braces. Yeah. I heard braces. It's not good. Yes, I heard braces. Uh, oh, I, I don't I even think she has to try out. They're just going to look at her and give her the role. Cheryl continued to complain at me about Rebecca and other things. I turned to look at the school. The firefighters were standing by the fire truck doing nothing in particular, which meant that the fire was not a big one and had been put out right away. The cafeteria had been saved, although it would probably smell like smoke for the rest of the year. We all knew there'd be no more school that day, not until they were positive there was no fire left and the building had a chance to air out. Still, they couldn't let us go home until three o'clock. So the schoolyard began to resemble a junior high school riot, with kids playing all sorts of unruly games that made the teachers all start pulling out their hair. A club, said Cheryl. Huh? I asked, not having heard her. I said, we should form a club of all the kids who are second best. <laughs> yeah, right. And then one by one, do away with everyone in our way. <laughs> no, no. I'm serious. We could have a club just for fun. Something that only we could have. And none of the unbeatable kids could be in it. Like a, a second best club. That's a stupid idea. No, it's not. We could all go and do things and, and have fun and, and really make the unbeatable kids jealous that we thought of it before they did. Well, we'll be one up on them for a change. Yeah? Okay. Who would be in this club? I don't know. We'd have to think about it for a while. Come up with some names. I'll bet there are lots of kids who'd want to be in it. My brother, for instance. Nobody else would want to do it. They're going to laugh at us. But if they don't, Jared, we could be starting something big. A secret club that'll go on for years after we've gone on to high school. I thought about this. Cheryl always had a way of convincing me of things. But this time, she wasn't the one who convinced me. It was someone else. Hey, Jared! Someone called. It was that familiar voice. A voice I didn't want to hear. I could almost see those arrow pads and that red hair and those long, bony arms. Hey, Jared! Want a race? First race of the season? So this was it. The challenge. Austin was always the one to challenge first. Usually, he waited until the second week when he had seen me run and was absolutely sure he'd be able to beat me. I assumed 
This time, he asked me on the second day, and there were too many kids around for me to turn down the challenge. Don't you think it'd be better if we waited till the field was clear? Isn't this clear enough? I turned around. Sure enough, the field was clear enough to race. Austin had come over with about 10 kids, and more kids were joining us because everyone knew what he was up to, and everyone knew about our rivalry. Maybe we should wait until your legs grow some more. Everyone laughed. I laughed too. It was better to be laughed with than laughed at, right? Inside, I wasn't laughing though. Fine, right now. Austin smiled, that crocodile smile. Greg, hey man, go about 60 yards out and judge us. Greg Miller, one of the new seventh graders on the team, obeyed as if he had been given an order by God. So, this is where it begins, I thought. This year's competition, this year's war. I felt strong. I felt ready to run. I felt like I always felt when I raced with Austin that maybe this time I would beat him. <laughs> we got down into starting position. Then Austin got up. Wait, he said, took off his precious shoes, then his socks. He was going to run barefoot. Okay, he got back down. Are you ready to lose? He asked. I didn't answer. Instead, I said, no, but I am ready to stop reading because class is over. And he said, okay, I agree. I don't agree. And there we stop for today. Yes! Yes, because you guys had to do so much work today. It sounded yes. exhausting for you. Exactly.